Hey guys, Fundy E here. I'm recording on all three devices, 4K 30 with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, the Pixel 9 Pro, and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So we'll see how it is. We'll align this, we'll watch, we'll enjoy, and let's see how good video is. As Hayato is watching me behind. I'm all holding all three cameras with my hand and I'm shaking all Oh God, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so let's enjoy. Thunder E here. Welcome back, guys. And this is my camera comparison, otherwise dubbed the Black Test. And as you know, we're going to be taking photos with all these cameras to see how well they manage skin tones and also just a general representation of images and video. Speaking of video, the front facing camera there, it looked like the Galaxy had the better imagery and also audio. But bear in mind, the iPhone does have some tricks as well. But it was quite striking to see how much light they let in without balancing out for both the iPhone and the Pixel. But let's go ahead and start off with some selfies here because you know what? People love their selfies. So this is the very first image. It's a backlit image. And this is a very difficult image to, of course, uh, take selfies with. But the iPhone really does the best job here. It's got uh, at least just a better balance of my skin in this situation. And also the shirt is pretty solid in terms of just not being washed out. The Pixel, my shirt is washed out. I am washed out. While the Galaxy has a lot of orange to the image and also pretty faded in the background. So I give this one to the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now, our second image here is a portrait selfie, also backlit as well. And here the iPhone still does a good job. Better balance on my skin tone, better balance also on uh, with the shirts. Uh, now, while the Galaxy is still a little bit more orange, skin tone is nice, a bit lighter than I am, while the Pixel looks really washed out here with skin tone. Portrait background looks pretty solid overall. Uh, some people kind of prefer the iPhone and the Pixel's portrait. I kind of like what the Galaxy does, but I think all three are solid with the portrait bokeh. All right, switching over to the main lenses on all three cameras here, all images look good, a lot of detail across the board, but I think one of the good things is the sun reflection, which you can see uh, pretty prevalent on the Galaxy and a little bit on the iPhone 16 Pro Max is non-existent on the Pixel 9 Pro. Uh, it does a good job with this image, also casts a nice shadow balance with the light on the church cathedral itself, but still solid images for everyone, but the Pixel takes the cake here. This is also the ultra wide lens. Now, when we move into the 1X lens here, you can see the pixel started on the right does a good job in keeping the shadow and balance of the building, while both the iPhone and the Galaxy kind of brightens it up a little bit. The iPhone is a little bit more balanced there than the Galaxy, but I still, I kind of like the pixel image more just because it gives the same aesthetic as to what I saw that day when I took this photo. All right, moving in here, this is an ultra wide image. And you can see the iPhone is the darker of the three images with the pixel being the brightness and the Galaxy is kind of in between. Uh, in terms of my skin tone, the iPhone is much dark. Pixel brings in a little bit too much brightness. I think the Galaxy is more in, in the middle here, more balanced. Overall good images, but the Galaxy kind of takes the edge here. Now, looking at this image here at 1X, uh, again, you can see the Galaxy is a bit more balanced, but not doing a good job on the shirt, which the iPhone does a really good job there. Uh, but all images are good. I kind of prefer the iPhone, even though my skin tone is not exact. Skin tone is closer on the Galaxy than on the iPhone. And uh, this is something that's quite interesting when we look at these devices, whether you're looking at your phone or on your laptop or something like that. Now here is a 3X image and the Galaxy is more balanced iPhone is super dark. You can see how dark my my uh, pants are, even though it's it's really not that black. And then uh, the Pixel adds in so much brightness into it, which is not correct. A 5X image here, and though the Galaxy may look a little washed, it's more balanced in terms of color accuracy than the other two. The iPhone is pretty solid, but the Pixel tends to add in more brightness and a lot of that redness color as well, which is something we find quite a lot. So this next image is a portrait shot, 1X for both the iPhone and Galaxy, 1.5 for the Pixel. And this brings me to the topic of displays, because wherever you're watching this, you're gonna get a different experience. I'm gonna show you why shortly. But as we look at these images here, the Pixel looks pretty 
good. It's a uh, much lighter tone in general. Um, and uh, also, again, the bokeh looks very aggressive, uh, while the iPhone looks like a much lighter bokeh currently, as we see. And uh, my image also looks much darker in terms of my face. There's more uh, shadows kept in the image, while the Galaxy is much lighter and feels like an in-between image of the other two. Now let's go ahead and view this on my monitor as I'm editing this video because you're going to see a very distinct different look to these images, which is why I said displays are very important uh, as, as into how you represent what images you're looking at and maybe we should just all print photos. So here are the images here on my display and you notice there's a complete distinct difference with all three. First off, the Pixel 9 Pro has this reddish orange color added to my skin tone, which just is a natural and also there's a lot of sharpening across the board. You also notice that bokeh is super aggressive and the cutouts around the sunglasses also is not the best. Then moving to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, um, you see that the skin tone is much better, especially around the arms. Um, it's a bit more uniform at the top of my face, just a very chocolate look, which isn't the case. Bokeh is nice um, and also the shirt color actually is very true to life accurate i think there is uh, some you know additional contrast added to it just a little bit and then we have the galaxy s24 ultra where i do like the skin tone it's a bit of course brighter than what we have with the iphone and i think my skin tone kind of lies in between both the iphone and the galaxy the, the galaxy is adding more color around my neck and i think the galaxy does a much better job around my face the bokeh is pretty nice on the Galaxy as well, but as you can see, the images here are very different from what we saw earlier, and the pixel is way off in terms of uh, what the representation of what I look like in the scene, and I would rather go with the Galaxy or the um, iPhone 16 Pro Max. One thing about the iPhone is that you do have photographic styles, and that's pretty cool because it allows you to pick a style that matches you. And I think that's something that Apple really intended this year to set the tone and fix things so that you don't have to have uh, an image that you don't like and you can change it either while you're shooting or after so pre or post doesn't matter which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at some video on the rear camera 4k 30 all three look pretty good I would say civilization is best on the iPhone 16 Pro Max Galaxy is a nice close second and the Pixel is a third but overall all look good the iPhone looks just the brighter image it looks like it's the one that has the most light coming in um, and when you're looking at all the images, they look good, um, pretty solid, but I think the iPhone just has the edge here. Now, another feature is shooting at 4K 120, which is something the iPhone can do now, but it's not just shooting at 4K 120, it's also being able to slow down that footage within the device, that's quite impressive. Now, the other devices, the Pixel doesn't shoot at 4K 120, the Galaxy does, do, does shoot at 4K 120 in its Pro mode. So we got ahead, went ahead and shot some stuff. And first off, you can see the iPhone footage really is smooth, feels like I'm using the gimbal. It was just basically freehand there, while the Galaxy footage was really shaky. But as I mentioned, you can go into just the camera app, uh, into photos, and slow down that footage. Having the, the doves fly by, feeling like a John Woo movie is something I was trying to aspire to. But that is a huge advantage for shooting video on the iPhone 16 Pro Max compared to the other two devices. With all that video love, let's get back into low light photography. Looking at all th three devices here, the iPhone and the, and the Pixel are the brightest. Galaxy has the better imagery of that line piece in the center, but they're all pretty good images. Uh, and also there's some bokeh effect across. Now, when it comes to my lamb here, uh, I think the uh, the iphone does the best job here it, it looked like it was on the rarer side but uh, the iphone has the best color accuracy to what i actually ate that night now moving over to this piece here this is uh stuffed uh pork that my wife had and uh, again the iphone had the better imagery here you can see it being well cooked while the the galaxy looks much lighter a little bit pinkish while the pixel is kind of in between but i think the iphone's imagery is the best here uh showcasing how well this actually looked as a dish it was actually absolutely fantastic um and then 
going out to some outdoor photos here. Now, these three were solid all across. I did like the Pixel best. It just had, even though the aggressive bokeh is not something I'm a fan of, but here it really looked good. Um, and also it highlighted the colors well. Now the colors of the outfits uh, for my, what my wife was wearing look better on both the iPhone and the Galaxy, but the Pixel 9 Pro just feels like a much solider image. One thing you'll notice is that there's more of that orange, reddish orange infiltration to my wife's color. Her skin color is closer to in between the Galaxy and the iPhone, so those two are the closest. The Pixel tends to add just more of that overall. You can see it even with the lights in the background as well. Now, same thing with this image here. Um, the iPhone and the Galaxy are closer together. The Pixel, again, a bit more saturated in those colors overall. But I think it does boil down to preference. I think all images look great. The other two look a little bit flatter here. And remember, depends on what screen you are actually viewing this on. Let's take a look at some selfies here a little bit. First off, the S24 Ultra selfie is really washed out. It's taking a lot of that ceiling light in, making me look pale. My wife also looks much paler. The iPhone, I think, has the best balance here compared to the Pixel. The Pixel has more of, again, that orange color come into play. It's just more balanced with the color of my shirts, the outfits, and that's just, just the way we look on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now, the second selfie is just me coming up. And again, you can see it quite clearly. The iPhone does a better job of just being pretty much in the middle. Color for the shirt, the inner shirt, um, my face, uh, as opposed to the Galaxy being really washed out and the Pixel, again, adding more of that orange. So that is just a nice placement for low light selfies. But let's jump back outside. Moving to me here. Now, these three images are interesting. The, the iPhone makes me look darker, so you really can't see my skin tone that well. My pants are really black, even though the color is closer to what you have on the Galaxy. The Galaxy adds in a lot of light from the side. There's a there's a lamp right there. While I think the Pixel is most balanced, but again, more of that orange red tone, where the color of my shirt is closer to the Galaxy than any of the two devices out here. This here is another good picture that kind of represents both. So when it comes to skin tone and the skin complexion, I think the iPhone does a much better job here while the Galaxy does a better job on my clothing as well as the car behind me, that red CLE 450. Um, while the Pixel is also pretty good, but I think, you know, the iPhone is just the most balanced there overall. Here's the signage here, which is also a pretty good way of just seeing how it does with text in low light conditions. Uh, the, the iPhone 16 Pro Max does a really good job of damping down the lighting, which the Galaxy is really pushing up higher and also making the lettering just more focused on that. Something that it does better than the Pixel and the iPhone kind of wins this one out as well. Let's take the camera outside and start recording. 4K 60, this is the Pixel 9 Pro. It's a good video quality, uh, though you can see the bounciness, uh, especially with stabilization, uh, but it does do a good, good job with images in low light conditions. So uh, I do like what the Pixel has brought to the table. Now, this is the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I really like what Samsung has done here. Less of that bouncy footsteps uh, on here, but you can still see some of the shakiness. Video looks really good, and I prefer the colors here over what I got with the Pixel. I'm Pro and the shift here also pretty solid. Finally, we have the iPhone 16 Pro Max. It's brightening up the image quite a bit and there's also a lot of that bounce and you can see the lens flares which they have corrected uh, this year or at least not yet. Um, right now, I'm favoring what the Galaxy has to offer for low light video. So who has the best camera? When it comes to video content or capturing video, it's a pretty easy answer. It's the iPhone 16 Pro Max. It's gotten better this year. Ability to capture 4K 120 is a great addition, but also stabilization of 4K 120 is really good. Uh, and you can see the clear difference when you compare it to other devices. Now, when it comes to photos, it's a little bit tighter, but not as tight as you'd expect. The Pixel doesn't come close to the other two, especially when it comes, pertains to my skin tone because of the added you know, reddish orange color, especially during daylight. And of course, some of the bokeh effects there. The Galaxy does a really good job, but I think this is something where the iPhone takes the cake. Photographic styles really comes in to fix and correct some of the issues that have carried over from the iPhone 15 to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, because 
With those photographic styles, you can actually set the tone, color style you want for your images. In my case, how I look. And you can carry that whenever you take photos and you can also adjust them after you're taking the photos. So some, the fact that with the iPhone this year, we've seen that on device adjustment on the fly and seeing the results, whether it be in 4K 120 or uh, photographic styles is a huge plus. Now, this is something that I think uh, Apple is also will do a good job in allowing you to set that up when you set up your camera so you have it ready to go. And camera control, uh, the camera button, that's what it is. I don't know why they call it camera control, but I do like the fact that it's very, it feels like it's contextual, but it's just really a touch sensitive physical button. So it allows you to double tap while holding, to move between options. You can long press to record video. Uh, you can also just press to open your camera, but it feels really smooth. This is something that at first I thought I wouldn't like, but I would love to see something similar to other devices. I don't think every device needs a, a camera button, but the iPhone, it really works out well. So that is the camera comparison, the black test. The iPhone takes the slight win with the photographic styles. I think straight out of the camera, if you're not using photographic styles for photos, the Galaxy is my choice here, but the iPhone is just so balanced overall that I think a lot of people will gravitate to that. So if you have any questions, any comments, or you totally disagree with me and say this is absolutely rubbish, leave your thoughts in below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.